Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah. Maybe my do a vlog today, inshallah. I'm gonna go for a walk. Instead of walking around the, the neighborhood, I'm gonna go to the place, you know, the place, <laughs> the, the lake area. Inshallah, I'm gonna take a walk around there. And then after that, if, if I'm finished in time, I'll go and get some chicken from the halal shop and make some chicken tikka today, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah for everything. Oh yeah, there's something I want to show you guys. This right here is called Claire American. Claire American, the the brand is really weird. Like Claire American, whatever. How are you gonna make this brand international, you know? Zero sugar, zero calories, zero caffeine, zero sodium. Literally, it has nothing in it. I don't know what it is. Um, however, this stuff tastes good. They have it in many, many flavors. This is strawberry, this is strawberry. But it tastes like strawberry cream, like you know, like strawberry cream soda. It's really good. They have pineapple. I like the pineapple one too, and it's pretty cheap. I think I got like a whole case for uh, what is it in a case? Like twelve? I don't know. I can't remember. But it was like four or five dollars, and you know, way better for your health than than sugar soda and all of that. So I just wanted to give a plug for that. They should change the, the brand into something more internationally acceptable. You know, calling yourself Claire American is, is weird. Well, alhamdulillah for everything, alhamdulillah. I'm gonna drive over to the to the area. I'm gonna chill a little bit. If we have time, read some hadith. And um, inshallah, I'll start cooking later, inshallah. Barakallahu feekum. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. It's Monday morning here. <clears throat> so I guess why it's seemingly empty. Um, I'm not really at the front yet. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, it's nice. It's nice. It's a good chill spot. I'm going to the Shaitan Rajim. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala Nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. So today, inshallah, I will be telling you the story of me, of my uh, effort, or I shouldn't say effort, but journey of seeking knowledge, seeking Islamic knowledge. And um, I thought about how will I tell this story, you know? Um, how will I make this story interesting, not only just like telling it. And... Um, where do I begin? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So I think I will begin when I was in middle school. Middle school. So this is where I will start. And there may be a part one or part two type thing. But we'll see inshallah. So middle school is the ages around... Um, what is it? Like... 10, 11, 12, or 12, 13, something like that. So when I first entered middle school, no, not middle school, I'm sorry, not middle school, high school. I'm old, I'm 30, so I forget these numbers. So high school, when I first entered high school, um, I was in a public high school. I wasn't really going to class. Uh, my, my time, even when I was in middle school, my time was spent doing a lot of things that would be considered wasting time uh, totally opposing seeking knowledge within this time uh, within this time, this era, this period I had a, a lot of friends that were kafar and we didn't do anything horrible at least from the things that I'll mention here in this video <laughs> um, but a lot of the time we just spent cutting school, like not going to school, going to the park, playing basketball, um, playing other games and stuff like this, chilling at our friend's house, you know, just wasting time. And um, at this point in my life, I knew that Islam is the truth, right? I knew that Islam is the truth. I knew a little bit about Christianity, you know, I knew a little bit about the other religions and worship, idol worship and stuff like this. So uh, in my head, it made common sense from the little that I knew about Islam. It's the truth that La ilaha illallah. 
there's nothing worthy of worship except Allah. However, however, I was not practicing enough and as much, and I was not really learning about Islam as much as well. But this was my state at the time. And so my first year, I think it was ninth grade, I was completely cutting school, completely cutting school. So one day, my parents, may Allah bless them, they say to me, you know, you're throwing your life away. <laughs> how, how about we put you into Islamic school? Islamic school. So I said, you know, I acknowledge in my head, I wasn't stupid. I, I had logic, you know, I was able to think. And I said to myself, are you going to let me pass, you big bird? And usually when you walk by them this close, they'll, they'll just walk away. Oh, there you go. I, I don't want you to walk with me. Please don't attack me. I'm friendly. I'll kick you. I wouldn't, I would, I would kick. Look, this one. No, go away. Go away, squirrel. So, uh, uh, trying to remember where I left off. Yes, so I told my parents, yeah, I'll go to this Islamic school. And, um, you know, inshallah, finish my high school education. Now, for my parents, and like any other parent, they think sending their child to Islamic school is the is the way to teach their children Islam. And it's not. It is absolutely not. I say this as a student of an Islamic school, uh, a previous student, like I did my high school years there. And I say this as a teacher of an Islamic school. This is not the method. The method is to, for you to learn Islam yourself, bring the teachings of Islam into your home. This is the correct method. So I did my four years at this Islamic school. However, I did not see myself gain any... Islamic development, except for maybe friendship and brotherhood, being around Muslims at the very least. Wallahi alhamd. However, in my later years of high school, and my not only that, after high school, I, I graduated. Uh, my birthday's in July, so I was 17 when I graduated. I spent a lot of time, again, relapsing to my early high school years and middle school years, wasting time. I would go by friends, chill out, play video games, you know, go chill. I wouldn't really do anything beneficial. Alhamdulillah for guidance. Walillah alhamd. However, this whole time I knew that Islam was the truth. I knew that it was the truth. And I ended up experiencing a, a an immense, what, what would they call it, like a like an eye-opening experience, a very, uh, you know, dangerous thing happened to me. I was in a car accident, and it was a really bad accident, really bad. And uh, I got hurt really bad as well. And it opened my mind, like I could have died, you know. I could have could have been dead. I could not be here speaking. But Allah, Alhamd, Alhamdulillah, Allah, for the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So this eye-opening event, this traumatic event where I was really damaged and I got hurt really bad uh, it, it told me, you know what, I gotta start taking this religion seriously, I can die May Allah make it easy And I would say before this happened, my mother, uh, may Allah have mercy upon her She passed away when I was 16, but even though I increased in worship, I did not increase in seeking knowledge. You know, I increased in worship to make du'a for her and constantly make du'a for her. You know, as much as I can. May Allah have mercy upon her. But I was still not, like, knowledge did not come to me yet. The beauty of knowledge. <clears throat> anyway, so going back forward to the story. So this is like early college years. This is maybe I was like 17, 18, 19. And um, I was just working and chilling. That was it with friends, playing video games with friends, hanging out with friends not really focusing on anything beneficial then this accident happened and I said, you know what, let me take my life a little bit more seriously let me start let me start learning about Islam let me start practicing Islam correctly, let me start uh, becoming closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so I guess this opens the door to the first uh, uh, aspects of me seeking knowledge and that is listening to the recordings of Anwar 
الاولاكي او الاولكي الله knows best from the way how you say his name and i'm not going to get into this individual and who he is his mistakes and errors and innovations etc <clears throat> that is already widespread talked about but however i listen to his recordings all of them every single recording that i could find on youtube i listen to i listen to them and my manhaj at that time was not pure it was not clean it was not of the salaf as-salih however this is where i began learning about islam and i listened to all of his recordings and i benefited from those recordings that were meant to be benefited from walillah alhamd and then <clears throat> some news came about about him and extremism and stuff like this so i was defensive of the the imam of the sheikh or whoever you, whoever you want to call him the person i'm not trying to uh, affiliate myself with a person of innovation but at that time i was defensive of him you know so i still continue listening to him but i decided to open my horizons and listening to more people and um of course i stopped listening to him alhamdulillah for guidance and uh, after that i started listening to the professors at al maghrib institute the professors at al maghrib institute primarily yasir qadi may allah guide him and us i mean so yeah i started listening to yasir qadi a lot not only not only listening i distributed his his recordings I, i burned them on cd's and dvd's and and data discs and i distributed it all of that um i would say i learned a lot from him I learned a lot may allah guide him his mistakes and and doubts are well known today and his statements that are just not the best are well known today um may allah guide him not only him but others are uh, from that group i would listen to uh and not those not from that group such as Kamal and Maki, Numan Ali Khan, uh Omar Suleiman. And I've actually I didn't meet him, but I was like a feet away from him on my Suleiman many years ago when I took one of his classes. May Allah guide him and all of those others that I mentioned. So walillah alhamd. Allahu akbar. So yeah, I learned a lot from them. However, from my experience of learning from them, I found it to be strange. because like you know i never heard them at least from me and i did not take a lot of their classes a lot of that was me listening to them on youtube but i never heard them quoting ulama i never heard them quoting shiyukh and not that i knew who was the shiyukh but i never heard them say oh sheikh so and so said sheikh so and so said I never heard this uh, everything came from themselves and i wanted to know who the ulama were So I ask Allah for guidance. I really ask Allah for guidance so I can become closer to him. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Look at this bird. So cool. Hey hey, I'm getting you on the camera. So alhamdulillah, and I'm probably forgetting some parts. This is hard to remember and everything. But alhamdulillah. So uh some friends of mine, may Allah bless them and sustain them. They said to me, you know, uh Rashad or Yusuf whatever they would call me uh, come to the class at the masjid at the masjid at the masjid and they was talking about masjid ahlul quran was sunnah the masjid that is upon the salaf as salih in queens new york walillah alhamd and i started going there and i started going there and i started going to the classes and, and everybody else like everybody else we fell in love with imam abu abdullah ismail hafizahullah our teacher So I think I began going to the khutbah this and that and the khutbahs by Imam Ismail is amazing walillah alhamd alhamdulillah um the imam he's now in Florida but he's a good bit away from me he's like an hour away from me he is the imam of a masjid here inshallah one day I'll see him inshallah and I also began going to the classes that they would teach this bird shut up <laughs> this bird. so I would, I would go to the classes and i remembered 
uh, Imam Ismail saying something in one of the classes that opened my mind. And I've had a few memories like this after that. Opening my mind to what knowledge really is in Islam. He said, and this is very common sense, but again, before this time, I, I, I didn't have this kind of a knowledge. He said, Sahih Bukhari is one book, not nine books. You know, all of those are volumes of one book. And then I realized, what is knowledge? That book is considered one book, that gigantic entire book with over 7,500 hadith is considered to be one book. Walillahi alhamd. So that was uh, an eye-opener for me pertaining to knowledge. And I sat in those classes for many years, Walillahi alhamd. And uh, I learned a lot. And I was there when Sheikh Khadr Aradadi came to America, Rahimahullah. And I was there when Sheikh Fahr al fuhair came to America, Hafizahullah. Walillahi alhamd. So within that time period, I went to Sheikh Ruslan's village and I already told you all about that, you know. One story I did not mention in that, vi in that video, in those two videos, is that I sat in the class that the Sheikh was teaching, Al Aqidat al Wasatiyah. However, that was beyond advanced for me. I was recommended to stay home and study Arabic, and that's what I did. So Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. So I guess I'm going to end it here for that, <laughs> that will be part one. Um, part two is more um, what I've studied insha'Allah and who, and, and who I've studied with insha'Allah. That was just the beginning. Barakallahu fikum wa jazakum Allahu khayran. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika sharawa la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.